This is White Plains Week, the weekly news roundup. With your moderator, John Bailey, editor and publisher of the daily internet newspaper, White Plains Citizen Net Reporter. Jim Benaroff, editor and publisher of SuburbanStreet.com and WhitePlains.com. And Peter Katz, noted broadcaster and journalist. White Plains Week, what's happened? Who are the newsmakers? And what's in store for the future? The views and opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the participants. White Plains Week is presented Fridays at 7.30 and again on Mondays at 7 p.m. here on Channel 76. Now, White Plains Week. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. White Plains and Westchester, and all you pollsters out there, crank those numbers carefully. John Bailey with you, White Plains Week, the City News Roundup show in our 16th year of bringing you the truth and nothing but the truth, always. Now, with me is Peter Katz, the anchor for all seasons, you knew that, and Jim Benneroff, the dean of the School of Journalism in White Plains, with the headlines. And here are this week's headlines for May 6th, 2016. Rainy week continues. Westchester County approves 30-year deal with Standard Amusements to run Playland. Trump triumphs over, 16, over field of 16. Sheldon Silver gets 12 years for corruption. Cost of sustainable Westchester, 80 sites could be over a billion dollars according to NYSERDA and the federal government. School districts set to deny church lease at Post Road School after somebody raises complaints. Children's Museum at Playland says it is open, but not much in it to see. County Health Department calls in the fathead minnows to take out mosquitoes and combat West Nile virus. Skytran executive suggests magnetic monorail can solve Westchester rapid transit puzzle. Women's Club of White Plains turns back the hands of time to celebrate White Plains becoming a city in 1916. And thank you, Jim. And let's now go to the Royal Newsreel March of Time. And there is a shot of a Model T Ford sitting out in front of the Women's Club of White Plains for the Gala Centennial Ball, which was held Thursday evening at the club. And we and there was lots of dancing to Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks, that popular group, and, and you were right back into the roaring teens, or ragtime, so to speak. And did they have other entertainment besides just the dance band? Yes, they had a barbershop quartet which circulated, and here's what they sounded like. Uh, of the event will be used yes, for. Yes, they're going to support the White Plains Rural Cemetery. And that now that barbershop quartet. Uh, yeah, 29 I, I, I think seconds. I've seen them. Yes. Uh, do, they, do they perform commercially? or? Uh, yes, in fact, they are performing at uh, Pleasantville High School, 7.30 Saturday night, if you enjoyed a little bit of that sound. And we only gave them 20 seconds, but they were really good. <laughs> and uh, I even danced with Francis Jones to begin the begin in the lobby. It was so good, Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks. And it was just a great evening to celebrate my planes of 1916. Was the mayor there? He was. He was shown wearing a top hat on B'nai Dane Robinson's Facebook, if you want to see it. And any other council people there besides Miss Hunt Robinson? Uh, I saw Beth Smeda, yeah. but I'm sure they were all out in force. Um, now, next story. The rain continues. That's the way it looked outside World Headquarters this morning. It's been it's been a rainy yeah. week, but it's oh, also been yeah. a cold week, and I think that that that's what have, have uh, has upset uh, people, at least the ones I've talked to, about the the weather. I mean, rain is 
you know, rain is rain, you know. But it's not, not a merry month of but May. But not, not when it's 40 yeah. or 50 this degrees. This has been uncomfortable. Yeah. Really, uh, and I've had the most rain outs I've had in 10 years of umpiring, and uh, five, very unusual. Uh, now, next up is Mr. Trump triumphing. No one's been raining on his parade. No. <laughs> in fact, people are joining the parade as we speak. Well, some are, and uh, some, some, some are, are, are quite, some are, they're quite reluctant to yes. endorse him uh, for president. Yes. Uh, right now, he he's, has a dispute going on with, um, with House Speaker Ryan, who says he's not ready to endorse Trump for president. Uh, they're supposed to meet to try to resolve their differences uh, next week. But uh, Trump, uh, in an interview uh, on television uh, last evening, said that he doesn't care what Ryan wants to talk about. He's just not interested in what Ryan has to say. say. You know what he told him at the end of the interview? You're fired. <laughs> and speaking yeah. of firing somebody else, well, Trump announced this morning that he would replace Janet Yellen as chair of the Federal, Federal Reserve. Reserve. Right. Uh -huh. He said he had nothing against her and was satisfied with her, but he thought that a Republican should be in charge. Well, actually, it, it's typical. typical. You know, when, when there's a, a new president comes in, it's expected that, that everyone uh, in office uh, uh, as an appointee, an executive appointee, will submit their resignation uh, to the incoming president. Some of them are accepted and some of them are not accepted. Uh, but what we're seeing, uh, you know, unfolding here, uh, and uh, as far as the, the Republican nomination goes, uh, is that there is clearly a split in the Republican Party over this. Uh, you have people such as both former Presidents Bush uh, and Mitt Romney declaring that they're not even going to go to the Republican convention. Well, it's just uh, eliminating a few more boring speeches. Already uh, the Hillary Clinton campaign is running a commercial, a paid spot, uh, consisting of clips of various anti-Trump people saying uh, and Republicans saying that uh, they're not going to endorse uh, Trump and expressing mm -hmm. uh, their, I suppose you could say, uh, conster Dismay. consternation uh, that, mm. uh, that Trump should, uh, should be the apparent nominee of the Republican Party for president. Uh, at the same time, uh, Trump has announced that he has hired a new finance director for his oh. campaign. And the finance director turns out to be from Goldman Sachs, uh, turns out to have been one oh, of the people really? who took over a failed, a failed California bank, and after taking over the failed California bank, proceeded to foreclose on approximately 35,000 California homeowners, throw them out of their houses, um, and uh, proceeded to uh, move into his own $26 million mansion in Beverly Hills at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy says that his intent is to raise $1 billion to finance the Trump campaign. And now, what that's uh, part, going to part, of, for? part of Trump's popularity yeah. uh, has been his statement mm -hmm. that he's financing the campaign himself. Trump can't be bought. I'm paying for all of this myself. Turns out that he's not going to be paying for all of it himself. Turns out that rather than paying the bills himself on his campaign to date, uh, what he has done is he has loaned money to the Trump campaign committee. And of course, we, as we expect, that the first thing, or among the first things he'll do when they start raising the billion dollars, is to pay himself back. Well, because he financed it. That's that's right. that's typically what happens uh, in campaigns, where uh, you have many candidates for many offices loaning money to mm -hmm. their campaign committees, and if it works out that there's a surplus at the end of the campaign, then they pay themselves back. Yeah, right. This leaves you breathless, doesn't it? <laughs> Speechless. The word finance can mean many things. <laughs> yes. Now, shocker of the week, Tom. And the shocker of the week is 
that we have a deal with Playland. And what does this deal consist of? The legislators voted 13 to 4 to approve the standard amusements agreement with the County of Westchester. It's to run Playland for 30 years. The county spends 33.3 million taking out loans for that amount and 46 they float bonds. They float that's bonds. right and they ought, but the actual total cost of this whole deal is 46.5 million in financing because the old playland debt is now being rolled in to the deal and standard invests 33 million more improvements will be done by standard over 30 years there will be a takeover by 2018 if county executes 50 percent of their improvements that part of that 33 million is that they're going to spend is going to be uh, used for the management fee to us was just the county 300,000 a year increasing at two percent and after standard recoups the investment the county shares in net profits of 8% growing to 12%, and that is the deal. But part of this deal, if we could have the next slide, please, is that the county legislature supplied the information that we still have $13,161,978 in debt service to pay on the old loans going out to 2026. Yeah, but the anticipation is that there'll be so much new cash flow generated over at Playland uh, that, that all of this stuff will be uh, basically uh, self-amortizing mm -hmm. and the taxpayers won't really Well, I don't know if that's the, the assumption, but, well, that, but if it, we it, have the if we have the uh, bottom line slide, you will see that even by 2027, the thing is supposedly losing money, even at 850,000 in attendance. But they expect that'll be farther up. This is a conservative thing. So. Well, they ex they expect that the attendance will yeah. grow dramatically. They right. expect that there will be uh, you know this the certain kind of fiscal. Uh, charm right. that you get when you bring in a private operator rather than a government operator. Right. But two of the county legislators who spoke about Playland at the board's meeting where they approved this were Ben Boykin of White Plains and Bernice Spreckman of Yonkers. They both expressed the view that revitalization and preservation of Playland is long overdue and it was now time to move ahead with this deal even if it's not the shrewdest deal the county might have negotiated with Standard Amusements. First Boykin, then Spreckman. There are a lot of people emotionally connected to Playland. It's a wonderful place. It's a beautiful place. Um, I think we can bring it back to the jewel that it used to be for Westchester County. Playland is opening Saturday, May 7th, so please come out. And I've had people call and say, is Playland still open? Yes, the park is still open. It needs work. It needs an investment. And that's what we're going to try to be doing here. And I hope that they make money, because if they make money, we'll be happy, and the park will be a success. God bless everybody. Work together. And whatever happens, we'll try to do the best we can with it. Thank you so much. Is this a good deal? I think it's a, it's a good deal to, to finally do something. I think that was the attitude expressed mm -hmm. uh, by the majority of the, the county legislators. And I think it, it's on target. Look, uh, it, it's not the best deal. It's not uh, Donald Trump, if he looked at this, say, I could have done much better. Uh, you know, <laughs> he could always do better, idea. right? Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's time to, to do something. I mean, uh, uh, this, we have been fooling around with this for years now, yeah. uh, and uh, and it's time to to bring in a, a new direction uh, to the place. Physically, it, it needs work, and also in terms of operation, it needs work. Right. I mean, it's uh, it, you you don't have, in my humble opinion, you know, r real marketing uh, and advertising and promotion that mm -hmm. can bring more people into the park and make it more useful uh, for. Uh, not only for the for the county, but for uh, all of those in the New York metro area, you know, who are looking for a very pleasant place to take the family, <clears throat> take the kids, Jeff? have some fun. Well, I really felt that the county could continue to run the park, but um, and I would have to go into a long explanation. But um, you know, this is okay. I don't think it's great. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll certainly give them a chance, but uh, I would have certain things I would have done at Playland. Well, I thought the whole idea of getting someone else to run Playland was so we would get rid of the debt service. And now we have a lot more. I don't think that was the original intent, and that's that's why I have trouble with it. Well, the, the prevailing opinion is that if they turn this around in terms of attendance, if they increase the gross, the debt service will take care of itself. Uh, as Boykin said very succinctly, that the debt service was going to be there. It, it's, it's around the, the taxpayer's neck any way you look at it. Mm -hmm. So let's try and pay it off. Mm -hmm. Well, with, they, with can new add, management. they can vast standard amusement. Hey, pay that off, and it's yours for even less. But they didn't do that. Well, but the the key mm -hmm. is that the county retains title to the property. It's still county property. Wonderful thing. So. But at any rate, moving along to a picture that says a lot. This was the page three of the Journal News this morning, and those two stories together are interesting in what they say. There is the picture of the Holocaust Remembrance Day ceremony held at the Garden of Remembrance on the left. In that's, that's in downtown White that's Plains, right. just a stone's throw and, from the county office building. And on the right is a story about a group of people who protested that a church was being rented at $31,000 for the period of rental uh, of rooms in the Post Road School in White Plains. Well, and, they're renting it out so that a right. church can conduct a service there. Now, right. in, as a matter of law, it's been uh, determined that, that yes, uh, if you're going to rent your school facilities out to community groups uh, to use or to outsiders to use, you, you also must rent to uh, any religious organization that uh, so right. chooses to but use. But why facilities. would why would anyone complain about that in this day and age? I guess we're not as diversity loving as we would like to think ourselves to be. Well, if, if, if it's a disgraceful story and tremendous editorial judgment putting them right together. John, if you're looking for a lack of diversity and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, racial uh, animus, uh, just take a look at some of the Trump rallies. Right. <laughs> but anyway, moving on to something other, also children related. The Westchester Children's Museum has ballyhooing that they are now open year-round. They open Wednesdays through Sundays. And the picture in the Journal News that was associated with their um, splendid announcement saying that they're opening uh, showed a very empty space in there. And we've walked past it a few times. And the admission is seven bucks to go in. And there's truly not much there. And they say they want to earn $5 million in fundraising to do some more HVAC work and bring in exhibits, but this has been going on for some time. And it's basically not really, I think, it may be complying with the letter of the, of the agreement with the county to get this museum going, but hey, it's taking a long, long time. And well, you're not saying that there's something fishy going on there, because uh, no. th there's something fishy going on in Westchester, you know. That's right. In fact, it's the fish minnows, the fathead minnows are being offered by Westchester County at dates um, coming up to be put into pools of water and lakes around the county to eat mosquito larvae because we've had so much rain. That shows you the size of these wonderful uh, shock troops to deal with a snail virus. And um, you can check with the uh, county's website or go to my website where you'll see the information on when these dates are. In fact, you could pick them. You could have picked them up up at the airport on. Friday, I guess they're being flown in. <laughs> I have no I mean, idea. <laughs> a, a fathead minnow lift, right. But anyway, I think the county is really trying to get, get uh, I think this is the first time they've used the minnows. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be no, a bad certainly it's a different season. approach. I bad think, season. I think they used them last year, but I'm not sure. Right. 
I don't um, recall that, but uh, it's possible, I suppose. Right. Yeah. Now, last week there was a meeting at the uh, at Westchester County over at the Renaissance. The Westchester County Association presented a series of seminars um, about how Westchester could grow and brought in other um, uh, city leaders to explain how they did it. And we learned two things: a SkyTran executive suggested that we could. Help! We can put in rapid transit via a monorail magnetic system, which he has installed in Tel Aviv. You and know, John, if you think back a couple of years ago, we had a discussion about possibly putting in a monorail mm -hmm. system. Yes. Um, uh, I remember uh, bringing that up and pointing to how wonderfully uh, well the monorail at Disney World yeah. works. Right. Um, hey, why can't we get Disney that? to do it? Yeah. Why can't we get Disney to do it, please? Uh, also, the, the, get the, done right, right? The, the Disney World bus system is probably the best bus system yeah. in the world in terms yeah. of getting people around. Right. Uh, so. And uh, the other thing about this was that it only costs nine million a mile, as opposed to millions, millions, millions more for rail. So let's hope they might pursue that. And hey, where is that bus rapid transit system? Well, actually, as long as you're on, on the bus rapid transit, which is a, 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 an important uh, element to the plan for the new Tappan Zee Bridge, mm -hmm. uh, they are starting this weekend to tear down the toll barrier on the Tarrytown side of the End existing of Tappan era. Zee Bridge. They're going to be taking out uh, about four or five of the existing toll booths are going to be doing it gradually, and then they have to shift lanes around, um, doing it, it piecemeal. Uh, the uh, the Easy Pass gantry toll collection system is now operational over on the Rockland side uh, mm -hmm. of the bridge. Right. So hopefully everybody will be getting their Easy Passes and not just banking on the fact that they're not going to come after you. <laughs> right. Which is what is really happening. Nobody's well, paying bill, those bills. Not, if you don't have an easy pass, they just bill you. Yes, that's correct. They they so they mail you a bill. Uh, but there's and, no penalty uh, if you're not paying them. Well, there is a penalty if you if you miss five bills in 18 months, then your registration is suspended. Oh, they have decided you, you to know, do that. The, the, the yeah. interesting because thing is, you know, this business of suspending registrations for this and that and everything else, they start to dig into the revenue that they receive for registrations. So Yeah, they're not going to do that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a, there's a limit to how many registrations you can really take oh, away. Yeah, right. And um, the, but anyway, we have to check into that to see if they actually legislated that. But anyway, right now, you know, there's, we have a per person who's looking for a job shortly in about nine months and uh, he and I if I were the um, late night TV com comedians that are on the networks I'd be really worried Peter tell us about it well you know John the White House Correspondents Association held its annual dinner in the nation's capital last weekend and as is tradition the president assumed the one night role of stand-up comic in chief this was President Obama's eighth and final appearance at the dinner as president, and White Plains Week cameras were on hand to capture these highlights. Here we are, my eighth and final appearance at this unique event. <laughs> and I am excited. If this material works well, I'm going to use it at Goldman Sachs next year. <laughs> Earn me some serious Tubmans. That's right. That's right. Next year at this time, someone else will be standing here in this very spot. And it's anyone's guess who she will be. But. <laughs> Hillary once questioned whether I'd be ready for a 3 a.m. phone call. Now nah, I'm awake anyway because I got to go to the bathroom. 
I'm up. This is a tough transition. It's hard. Key staff are now starting to leave the White House. Even reporters have left me. Savannah Guthrie, she's left the White House press corps to host the Today Show. Nora O'Donnell left the briefing room to host CBS This Morning. Jake Tapper left journalism to join CNN. The prospect of leaving the White House is a mixed bag. You might have heard uh, that someone jumped the White House fence last week, but uh, I have to give Secret Service credit. They found Michelle, brought her back. She's safe. <laughs> She's safe back at home now. Um, GOP Chairman uh, Reince Priebus is here as well. Glad to see that you feel that you've earned a night off. Congratulations on all your success. The Republican Party, the nomination process, it's all going great. Keep it up. Well, we've got the bright new face of the Democratic Party here tonight, Mr. Bernie Sanders. There he is, Bernie. Bernie, you look like a million bucks. Or to put it in terms you'll understand, you look like 37,000 donations of $27 each. <laughs> well, let me conclude tonight on a more serious note. Uh, I want to thank the Washington Press Corps. I want to thank Carol for all that you do. You know, the free press is central to our democracy, and nah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know I've got to talk about Trump. Come on. They say Donald lacks the foreign policy experience to be president. But in fairness, he has spent years meeting with leaders from around the world. Miss Sweden. Miss Argentina. Miss Azerbaijan. And there you have it, That's President, right. President Obama at the White House and, Correspondents Association dinner. And he was kidding about the press. Every, every, any politician starts praising the press, you know. <laughs> That's just not right. Oh, by the way, a note of Melanie Ryan, a, the, um, uh, the daughter of uh, Susan Katz, well-known person on the planes, opened the Center for Health and Healing up in Mount Kisco last weekend. They had about well over 50 people attend the opening, and uh, we hope to be interviewing her on a future date. And uh, she and her husband, Andy Stegmeyer, are running a really terrific facility, and they specialize in crystal uh, Reiki massage, and there's a little stone there in the lower left-hand corner of the picture that shows you one of the crystals they put on your body and magically do great things. So check it out. John Bailey saying good night for Peter Katz and Jim Benaroff and White Plains Week. White Plains Week has been a presentation of White Plains Citizen Net Reporter, WPCNR.com in cooperation with Channel 76. Comments may be emailed to WPCNR at AOL.com. The copyrighted print White Plains Cityscape by Leonard Weber is used courtesy of the White Plains Presbyterian Church. For information on its availability, you may contact the church at 761-8585. The views and opinions expressed on the preceding program were solely those of the participants. White Plains Week is presented Fridays at 7.30 and again on Mondays at 7 p.m. here on Channel 76. For White Plains Week, this is Seth Benaroff speaking.